What's up you guys, Bloody Jacob here to bring you another Supernatural review. This time we're going to be talking about Season 15, the 15th and final season, Episode 3, called The Rupture. Jacob here, meeting my icon, Catherine Isabel here. We basically have the conclusion to our really three-part uh, final season opener here, because basically the first three episodes here are, you know, uh, basically tied together, you know, taking place, you know, quickly after the other. And of course, you know they're still trapped. The ghosts and spirits are trying, and the escaped demons are trying to break through the, you know, the force field. Basically, that you know Rowena, Rowena had put up. And uh, this episode, I think, was definitely, especially initially, the best so far of the uh, last season. Um, thus far, <laughs> again, um, especially when I initially seen it, I did like it quite a bit just because of the the acting. Um, the performances from our uh, our lead actors um, definitely sold it, but you know, ever since I watched the episode earlier today before work, um, it's uh, you know, sort of become a bit lukewarm for me. Just like the first two episodes of the last season, where I mean, I, I have a you know custom like supernatural you know Boondog Saint shirt here. By the way, I absolutely love Supernatural. Um, I think Dean Winchester is one of the all-time great TV characters in history. I still have faith that they're going to end the show strong and that they'll uh, satisfy me with wherever they leave Dean and the others off. But so far it's a bit lukewarm, you know, for the first few of the final season. I didn't really expect to say that. Um, you guys can go watch my my thoughts on the first two episodes if you want to hear more of, more of uh, that. But three, I think, was a bit of an improvement. You know, I definitely felt like it had a higher, obviously like a higher amount of stakes and risk and urgency. Uh, the first two oddly lacked, um, especially when they were able to, uh, you know, stop all those zombies within the first, you know, 10 minutes of the premiere. Um, this still, you know, I think feel like, ugh, this still, I feel like could have been, I don't know, I feel like it could have had more going on to it. I mean, he had all these, you know, things, you know, trying to break through, you know, to escape into the rest of the world. Um, but there's supposed to be like hundreds, maybe even, you know, a couple thousand or something, right? Um, so it was odd that you had all our characters here just kind of walking around, you know, just steadily. Um, I feel like it should have been almost been like a war zone, you know, these first, you know, three episodes, especially right here. Like, they should have been dodging, you know, creatures or, you know, just, you know, even just, uh, fog-like stuff flying at them or something, but really they're basically at peace and it feels kind of empty besides just like the blips you see against the forest field. Um, so I don't know, it feels like they have potential stuff going on, but then it's, they don't really do much with it again. I don't know, I'm a bit, I'm a bit underwhelmed by the final season so far, but again, I do have faith in how they'll eventually wrap it up. I think it will be pretty strong when it gets to it. But again, I think it's a case of, uh, quantity over quality too you know they knew fans were going to demand as many episodes as possible so they gave us 20 instead of the usual 22 but i honestly think the final season should have been maybe 13. just a little bit of room for some uh, bottle stuff but it would have been a much more focused uh, story that matched the urgency of what the final direction should should and did present itself as um but instead we have a little it's a little more padded out although this is definitely a big episode here we see the deaths of a couple important, fairly important characters, 
And uh, it was emotionally impactful just again because of how good the actors are with their performances. They really make you care and invest. Um, Ro Rowena's death uh, was fairly surprising. You know, it is kind of out of nowhere. You know, the third episode um, out of out of twenty. Um, but you know, her death fit. You know, uh, you know, Sam is one who had to put her down, and she does it to uh, you know finally finally take everything back into herself, you know, from what's been going on the past three episodes and, you know, fall back in. Um, really good at acting between um, Ruth Cannell and uh, Jared Padalecki there. So I think I thought Rowena's death actually worked and, you know, how she says goodbye, boys, you know, emulating uh, the last thing Crowley said to him. I know Mark Shepard is kind of uh, at odds, you know, with us on the writers and showrunners, but I, I really hope they work something out with Mark Shepard to appear in, at least once in the last season, in the last few episodes or something. Um, but so, so that part I thought was pretty good. But then you have Ketch, who is being taken to the hospital. He wakes up, there's a demon trying to get information out of him, and he basically ends up getting his heart torn out, and that's it. <laughs> he he does have a really nice line, you know, about how he, is, he wasn't going to... She realizes he's not protecting uh, anything going on there. He's protecting uh, the Winchesters, you know, someone else. Um, so I thought it was good, you know, good uh, arc for the character that he actually cared enough about him and wanted to redeem himself. I protected him even faced with death, and then he was killed for it. So I thought that was good, but they barely bring him up afterward, besides Dean mentioning it at the end. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I didn't have a problem with Catch dying so much. It's just that who killed him... Uh, was killed pretty soon later. You know, she didn't really feel all that threatening. Um, so it's a little random, and things like that happen in their world, but still felt a little anticlimactic for what they could have done with them, I think. Uh, so that part, I, I don't know. And then you have um, Dean, who still sort of blames uh, Castiel for what happened with Mary and Jack. Castiel, meanwhile, is forced to put down Balthagor, or whatever his name was. Which is another rush dark, you know, why the fuck was Velthagore important at all? He's already gone. <laughs> um, you know, basically they turned Velthagore into like a, basically a generic, you know, power-seeking demon again. You know, wanting to collect all the souls and everything and, you know, rise up himself as the new king. Better than Crowley and everything like that. He says they are bringing up Crowley a decent amount, so I'm still crossing my fingers. Um... But yeah, it turns into a generic villain. Castiel's forced to put him down. It bothers him because he still looks like Jack. But the body is then turned to uh, Ash, basically. So I don't think we're getting... We might get Jack back. You know, we might see him again, at least. Um, but yeah, then there's an issue between Dean and Cass because Dean still blames Cass for what happened with Mary and Jack and not handling that right or catching it before it happened. Um... And then, you know, good acting again between Jensen Ackles and Misha Collins, especially. Um, Misha Collins laying out their problems on the table, and, you know, Dean is not wanting to talk to him, and so he ends up leaving, saying he has to move on. But, you know, Cassio's going to show up later to help, and is Cass going to sacrifice himself again? I mean, especially with our three lead characters, like, uh, we almost don't feel too worried because the only times we see him die and come back except it is last season so if they do die this season you think it's probably permanent but still um you sort of get the perspective of the dean's problem with cast but at the same time they've had uh issues and drama with our three lead characters before and it kind of feels repetitive at this point i think it's happened too often in the series um so it kind of feels uh telegraphed <laughs> really at this point um it feels a bit forced so I, I don't know. I mean, I'm still liking it. I still enjoy Supernatural, any episode of it. And uh, I am excited to see what the final uh, conclusion is for Dean, especially in the rest of them, too. Uh, but for now, it feels like, okay, come on, let's get here, or at least uh, do some things that stand out a little bit more until then. I don't know. I'm not overly pleased, but I'm not one of those, uh, you know, crazed fans saying, oh, this sucks. It should have ended, you know, eight seasons ago or whatever. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so overall this episode, uh, well, the best of the season, it still kind of has some work to do to really feel as good of a send-off as it could be so far. Still some good acting between the performance as usual, though. I'm giving it like an 8.7, 8.9 out of 10, somewhere in there just for that. So yeah, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.